The Defender 90 is, in my opinion, the coolest in the lineup of Defenders because it has this short wheelbase. So in this video, we're going to talk about this design from a front side and rear view and also the interior before we go for a drive. But let's have a look at some of the basic spec and tech of the Defender 90. In this version, you get a 3 liter inline 6 putting out 395 horsepower and 406 pound feet of torque mated to an 8 speed automatic. 0 to 60 is done in about 5. 7 seconds. Fuel economy sits at about 17 MPG city and 22 highway and the base price for the 90 is $54,000. Huge thanks to Royal Automotives here in Denver for letting me review this beautiful Defender 90 for you guys today. Go and check out their inventory at royalautomotives.com or click the link down in the description. Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to have a look at one of the cars that I've been wanting to review for a very long time ever since it first came out actually. That is of course the new Land Rover Defender. It's not as new anymore, a couple of years old, but this specific one here is the 90 version, which means shrank the wheelbase by 17 inches. And I think it looks so much better or cooler. It looks, just looks cooler than the 110 and the one, uh, 130. So what we're going to do in this video, talk about the front end design, talk about the side and the rear, and then we're going to jump into the interior, have a look at what's going on there. And then we're going to take it for a short drive. Let's start with the front end design. When they refreshed the Defender, it was a huge task for the design team to come up with something that both look modern and futuristic almost, but at the same time, they did not want to make just a modernized retro version of the old Defender. They wanted to, to encapsulate the spirit of the old Defender and put it into a new package. And I think it came out looking really cool because you can still see the more boxy shape than we have from other Land Rover models. And these big round headlights, it doesn't have that aggressive look to it. It's almost a little bit aggressive and a little bit friendly at the same time. That's exactly what the design team was going for. But what I think is interesting here is just the number of slots for the grill and for the cooling. We have one up here, we have a second one down here, then a third one here, fourth one, and a fifth one at the bottom when you have these perforated uh, skid plate. And in that sense, maybe it's a little bit over stylized in the front end when it comes to the cooling, but I do like the overall uh, personality that we have when we look at this because car design today needs to have some sort of personality. When you look at the face of a car, you want it to express something. And I think this does that really well. A couple of details that I want to uh, bring attention to. First of all, you have the black housing for the headlights, which I think adds some um, more graphic features and interest in the front end. If these were body colored, it wouldn't have the same expression in the front face. I also like this line. So this is the first line or the first area that's going to hit something if you uh, accidentally hit something. It's not really the bumper, but it sits very high up and it sits further out than the bumper down here, almost in the same line. But I do like how they integrated this line here to kind of encapsulate the top part of the grill. And on top we have the Defender letters kind of stamped onto the, the hood, which I think looks really cool in this dark gray color, adding some more classic features to the front end like we have in the original. One graphic detail that I really like about the front end is the, are these small holes or perforations that we have in the lower section of the car in combination with this mesh that we have in the in the main grill. Adds some more interesting features in the front end and kind of brings the level of quality up when you have different types of textures in the front end. So as always, the best way to kind of get a hang of the proportions of the car is to look at it from a side view. And looking at the 90, I think it looks so cool with the 17 inch uh, cut of the wheelbase that we have to the 110. And just look at this beautiful shoulder line that cuts all the way into the front and it kind of wraps around the hood in the front. And we have these black cladding around the wheel arches and this beautiful chamfer. These wheel arches themselves look nicely sculpted and kind of beefy for this type of vehicle. Then you have functional air vents here with the Defender logo up top. I think this graphic features also add to the overall design of the car massive black cladding at the lower part because you need it if you're going to go on the trails. You don't want to have a bunch of rocks kicking up on the paint. So they added the extended black trim at the bottom, which also kind of cuts into the 
overall height of this it makes it look a little sportier and more athletic and up top we have this safari windows which i think is a really cool feature that they added on the new defenders this is a huge window in the rear end however you can't open them at all so it's just a huge panel of glass and you have the two-tone as well i like that the roof and the top part the greenhouse is all black i think it looks cool it adds again to the contrast of this design and the wheels are 255 60 or 20 so you get 20 inch wheels these are painted in black which also compl complements the other black features that you have and overall i think it's such a cool design and the, the fact that land rover actually decided to build the 90 even though it's less practical than the 110 and the 130 it's still gonna handle a lot better off-road thanks to the shorter wheelbase you have a ground clearance of eight inches that you can raise up to 11 if you want to if you're going over some really rough terrain all right guys so moving on to the rear view of the defender 90. one thing i love about the rear is just if you look at this shoulder line and just look how abruptly everything is cut it's a vertical rear end looks like someone took a knife and just cut through the the 90 and kind of made it shorter like this and down here we have a solid bumper with some tow hooks you have the spare wheel with the defender on it and you also have these super cool graphics and the uh, indicator lights are kind of like if you took these two uh tail lights and use a 3D software to, software to kind of scale it down, you get these two indicator lights right here. Another interesting and kind of weird detail of the rear end is this black strip that houses the tail lights. I don't think I've ever seen this before. And then you have the reverse lights right here in between these two, in addition to this big uh, uh, bumper in the rear. Underneath, I love that we have two dual exhausts. And I also kind of like that they didn't extend the pipes to stick out too much because this is remember this is not a sport vehicle this is an off-road vehicle so having them kind of just end right there underneath it suits this type of vehicle all right guys we are inside the defender 90 let's fire it up real quick so what are we working with here we have a 12 inch infotainment screen with look at this we have a nice housing for it and it looks beautiful because it sits very deep inside of the dash we have a 10 inch infotainment screen which i think looks absolutely perfect it's not you don't need any bigger than this this is the perfect size for me and down here you have the the um the dials for the climate control you can switch between having a fan speed the same dial to be used as a fan speed you can also raise or lower the the defender if you want to by these buttons here and i like the integration of this sort of control panel here because i feel like having the gear lever here feels a little bit like a minivan style but in this case it works down here you have usb a usb c two cup holders you have a big actually not so big uh, storage compartment right here in the middle wireless charging if you need that the detail that i love the most in here is the dash itself so this is hollow i can put my arm behind the uh the screen itself so you have a big shelf where you can put stuff on right here you also have an additional usb a plug and the defender stamped in to the dash details like that i love because it shows that he puts a little bit more effort into making it a cool unique interior there's a lot of holes in here a lot of cool spaces overall vibe that i get from this is that the exterior kind of morphed into the interior and we still have this um industrial rugged feel in the interior as well and i absolutely love it it would be really weird if they had this exterior and then the interior turned out to be a soft organic shape it just wouldn't work really well same thing with the with the, with the steering wheel there are holes in the spokes they have a lot of holes everywhere and i think this defender steering wheel also brings in that industrial look you have the defender logo right here in the center and on the right spoke you have the controls for the cruise control on the left side you have all the uh, audio settings for the radio and so on another graphic detail that i love about this interior is you can see the nuts and bolts of how the door is assembled the inside of the door with the uh, with where you have all the features all the speakers and everything 
you have this bar going around it or this trim piece going around it where the visible nuts and bolts are clearly there and that also adds to this rugged off-road feel of the interior in the Defender. All right guys so we are driving the uh, Land Rover Defender 90 my favorite version of the Land Rover lineup because it has a shorter wheelbase and just has a stubby look to it. The powertrain here we're, we have an inline four three liter uh, inline six three liter with two uh, 395 horsepower and 406 pound-feet of torque which is the same that I have in my Rebel but this is a lot smaller package so should be pretty lively to drive and we also have an eight-speed automatic zero to 60 is said to be around 5.7 seconds when they came out with the first with this refresh defender I was a little bit disappointed that they didn't make it into almost a modernization of the um, original Defender. But then I read the reasoning for it, for not just taking the old design and just putting some LEDs on it and calling it a day. As I said in the beginning of the video, they wanted to kind of encapsulate the spirit of the Defender while still making it its own identity. And I think they really managed to do that specifically with this 90 version and the color combinations that you have the blacked out greenhouse you can have the roof being white so it goes back to the you know proper original defenders i think graphically and the proportions of this it turned out really cool yeah it feels pretty quick for what it is i mean it feels like it does zero to 16 about that range five five and a half seconds or maybe even five seconds but that's not what this car is about either it's not about the speed it's about the off-road capabilities and i love that we have the uh, option to raise it from eight inches of ground clearance to 11 by just hitting a button in here and you also have like 10 different drive modes so you can definitely specifically specify what it is uh, what type of surface you're on. The ride quality overall, I wasn't expecting anything less, but it is fantastic. This also has air suspension, which helps swallow those small little bumps that you have in the roads, potholes and so on. But overall, it's a super comfortable ride and definitely a car that you can go uh, for longer road trips in without any problems. And that's my review of the Defender 90. Thanks for watching and thanks again to RoyalAutomotives.com for letting me review this car today. Go check out their full inventory in the link in the description. And I will see you in the next video.